morning. Uh, thank you for being here this morning. Uh, I want to start off by thanking uh, Coach Steve Adazio for the seven years that he spent here on the Heights. Uh, he gave his heart and soul to this program, uh, and I appreciate all the efforts and what he has done and the staff has done uh, to, to help develop our young men. Um, that said, uh, we're moving forward today. I'm excited, and we have an incredible opportunity uh, with Boston College football. Um, I understand that uh, we have young men in our locker room. I spent about an hour with them yesterday, and I was uh, really impressed with just how driven they are. High character guys, uh, want to be great, and it's refreshing because that's what represents BC. So we have an incredible opportunity, and I'm excited to find a head coach that's going to lead our young men and um, go to greater heights, and that's what we want. So uh, with that said, um, I'll open it up for questions. When you extended Steve last <coughs> year after the season, were there parameters in that extension that said you have to match Steve's goals or anything like that? No, you don't have specific parameters that way. Um, whenever a, a coach, specifically football, has less than four years, uh, you really want to make sure that they have that continuity because they're recruiting a four-year class. And so you're in a position where either you need to, to make a change or either extend. Um, and I felt really good about the progress that we were making last year. Well, um, we look at the whole body of work. And so uh, we evaluate throughout the year, but I started talking with Father Leahy at the end of the season, and we connected, and we just felt like um, the trajectory that we were on, um, I didn't feel like we were making the progress competitively that we needed to. Uh, we want to be more competitive in conference and, and nationally, and I just felt with the total body of work uh, that we, it was time to make a change. Integrity is the first one. We want uh, a person of high integrity. Uh, we want a leader, uh, someone that understands Boston College. We have a wonderful opportunity here. Our Catholic Jesuit values, men and women for others. It has to be someone that understands us. Uh, we're proud of that. We have a rich tradition in history. A lot of guys have done really well that came in this program. We want to build on that, someone that understands that. Uh, a teacher, someone that's passionate to teach the game, but teach the skills that they need for life. And someone that wins. We want to win. And we want to be competitive. And we talk about competitive excellence, and that's something that we're going to, going to look for. Correct. Rich is, Rich Gunnell is going to coach. Um, he's incredibly talented. Um, I'm excited about Rich. Uh, he is an eagle. He, he's played here. He understands us. Um, he gets it. Um, and he's the right person to lead our young men to go get a seventh win. Uh, but he, he will not interview for the job, and, and I don't know the time frame. Obviously, we have signing day, December 18th. Ideally, we'd have someone in place by then, uh, but I'm not going to commit to a time. I know not to do that. Martin, your background is Big Ten. Is that one of the areas you'll be looking? I'll be looking everywhere that we can find a, a head coach that's going to be great to lead our men. So it's, whether it's Big Ten, whether it's Pac-12, whether it's whatever conference, it doesn't matter. I think with every one of your programs, you always try to have uh, a, a list in mind or characteristics of the job that you feel are, are really important. Uh, so you always do that with all of our 31 one sports. Uh, I think and specifically with football, you do watch a lot of football, uh, but usually in season you're so focused and locked in on, on your current team and your current staff and what you can do to help them be successful. So it's not something that, that, you, that you're looking at all the time. but. Um, it, it's always in the back of your mind as, as an AD, you want to be prepared in case something happens, a coach leaves, uh, you have to make a change. Uh, and so you always have a, a list or you have people that you're, that you're watching. But most importantly is the characteristics, who, who's out there that demonstrates the characteristics that really fit where we are and what we need to move forward. Could you just talk about how you know it's important not to wait till the end of the season? Yes, uh, you know, I, I think if you make a decision, you need to act decisively. I don't think it helps anyone to delay 
um, uh, a decision on, on either side. I don't think it's fair to whoever that coach or that staff is, and I don't think it's fair to the institution. Um, when you make your mind up, I think you need to act. And, and so I wanted to do that as, as quickly as we could uh, to move forward because uh, I think it's really important uh, to, 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 to get in the marketplace when you can, when you know you're going to make a change uh, and, and start that process. You know, we, we have a capital campaign now called Greater Heights. We talk about Greater Heights. We want to achieve more. And you saw that last year where we were in the top 25. One of our strategic goals and our strategic plan is to be a top 25 football program. You know, that's a goal that, that I feel strongly about. Um, and, and you saw that last year when we got back into the top 25. We were competitive. Uh, and so that, I think, is, is really important to understand what we can be. And we've got a great, rich tradition in history. We've done it before. Sometimes you got to look at your past to see what you can do. And I know we can do that. I think we have a lot of talent. I think we have potential. Um, and I think we got to maximize that. Uh, so I, I'm excited. Uh, you know, this is not something that's a, a rebuild. This is a retool to go for greater heights. And that's, that's, what, that's what this is about. No, we're not taking a step back. This is all about moving forward. Again, this is, um, this is a solid foundation. If you look at our team, we have a lot coming back, a lot of talent coming back. Um, this, is, this is a launch pad now. Uh, I, I, really, I don't really get into you know, the how many wins. I know, I know that's important to, to uh, fans, but I look at momentum. I look at energy. I look at progress. Are we progressing? You know, if you're not progressing, then you're, you're either stalling or you're moving back, and we want to move forward. And so that's, that's kind of when you look at everything, I want a program that's, that's constantly moving forward, pushing it, progressing, and, and that's, that's what we want to do. Is Aaron in, in negotiations with the Bulls right now? Have you been in contact with the Bulls? Or anybody else? No, you, you've had a, a couple conversations. Like There were two Bull representatives at the, at the pit game that, that I met and talked to a little bit. But um, during this process now, it's just kind of a feeling out. They might send you – questions about you know what your attendance may be or how many alumni do you have in that area so we have started that process uh, we're excited about that but it really just just got started because we you know we got our sixth win on Saturday thank you Uh, first of all, <clears throat> I'd like to thank you know Martin for uh, giving me this opportunity to uh, lead our team, you know, for this bowl prep and for this bowl game coming up. Um, you know, I really appreciate you know his confidence in me and what he sees in me, even though I may not see it in myself. But just listening from him and starting to build my confidence and and trying to be the leader I want to be as I move forward in this coaching career. Um, I also, you know, definitely want to thank Coach Adazio because he. He's kind of shaped me into the coach I am today. You know, I learned a lot from him, and I'm, I'm very grateful for him and grateful for the opportunity he gave me to come back to my alma mater, uh, where I put a lot of put a lot of work in as a player, but it gave me an opportunity to come back and now be a coach and be able to coach the position that I played. Um, you know, with that being said, um, I guess I'll leave everything you know for questions right now. Rich, one of the benefits of bowl eligibility is those 15 extra days of practice. Mm -hmm. Coach Adazio in the past has always used it for team building, get the other young kids working, and then start game planning. Is that, are you going to follow that same approach? Or you I, I will, and and you know I did the same thing as a player, and you know Coach Adazio did the same thing, and that's what that's what we're going to do. You know we, uh, you know like Martin alluded to, we have a lot of talent coming back, and you want to continue to develop that talent, and uh, moving forward, and that that's my job is to keep these guys together, keep them focused on the task at hand. And that's just to win this bowl game. That's the only thing I'm focused on right now. Yeah. 
I mean, as a as a prideful, proud BC man, um, I'm just going to continue to preach what we're all about, you know, and that's toughness and, and faith and, and all those good things and high character guys. And just moving forward, I, I'm just focused on this winning this game. You know what I mean? That's the most important thing to me right now, keeping these kids together. we got great kids in that locker room and just making sure that they're all on the same page with what we're trying to accomplish, and that's winning this bowl game. Right, and I mean, that process has started, you know, meeting with the kids constantly, um, you know, we'll be on the road, but uh, having another meeting with them today, just letting them know, again, the main goal is to win this game, and we have, again, we got great kids, and that's who we are as BC, you know, we've always got great kids, kids we're recruiting, kids that are in the program, they're they're willing to stick together and fight, you know what I mean, and fight for this win, because that's, that's what they care about, they care about winning too, you know, regardless of what's going on, they play for each other, because it's about the kids, and you know, the coaches that helped build that relationship and developing them these last few years, you know, and they're going to do it together. And that's going to be my main message to them is just stick together throughout this thing right now. Mm-hmm. Right. Just, just how to approach this thing and how to approach kids and how each kids are, uh, each player is different and how you coach them differently. So, you know, some kids need a pat on the back, some kids need a kick in the butt. You know what I mean? Just different things of how to take different angles to get the best out of your players. That's what I've learned from him. Getting to p- get your guys to play as hard as they can. You know, the X's and O's will come, but getting your guys to play 100 miles an hour with their hair on fire. That's that's what I got from him. Uh, no, nah, I don't really want to get into that. I'm sorry. 